You're listening to Clyde's Favorite Old Time Radio, a podcast of the various genres of old time radio, science fiction, comedy, mystery, horror, and historical broadcasts. Hello, MPIR fans. This is Clyde J. Kale with a brief reminder. These shows are made possible through your donations. MPIR is listener-supported. If you haven't sent a donation in yet, please visit www.mpir-otr.com. That's www.mpir-otr.com. Please, a one-time donation of any amount via PayPal would be greatly appreciated. And thank you for listening to Mr. Play Internet Radio. The Johnson Wax Program with Philip McGee and Molly. The makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat present Fibber McGee and Molly, written by Don Quinn, with music by the King's Men and Billy Mills Orchestra. The show opens with Love Is. Well, don't let it worry you if you do, because you've got lots of company. No one denies that work is man's greatest need and almost his best friend. But that doesn't mean unnecessary work. Take your floors, for example. You could go on scrubbing your linoleum floors all your life, and what would it get you? Well, an aching back and red hands for yourself and ruined linoleum in the bargain. So you wisely protect your floors with Johnson's self-polishing glow coat, saving yourself unnecessary work keeping your linoleum always bright and shining, making it last longer. And with the hours of time you save with glow coat, you can do important things that perhaps you've had to neglect. Reading, playing with your children, seeing your friends. Johnson's glow coat saves work because it's self-polishing. It needs no rubbing or buffing. Look for the familiar red and yellow glow coat package at your dealer. attended the piano concert last night, and since then our hero has been in an artistic daze. The idea of learning piano has opened new and even more wistful vistas to him. And here on their way to the music store to arrange for piano lessons, we find Fibber McGee and Molly. Ah, but I'll be pretty popular at parties when I get so I can really slap a sign way around. Oh, Yeah. You thought you'd be pretty popular at picnics when you took up the mandolin, too. Oh, well, But I... who was it that was always sent back home for more potato salad? <laughs> well, piano's different. It's got class. Do you realize what it's going to cost you to take piano lessons? Oh, what I save on barbers will pay for the lessons. How so? Hmm, did you ever see a musician with a haircut? <laughs> Come on, here's the music store. Yes, sir? Something in musical instruments, sir? We're having a special today on sweet potatoes, $1.95. A two and a quarter with gravy. <laughs> this store arranged for piano lessons, Bud? Only with the sale of a new piano, sir. Oh, well, we could use a new one. Uh, what do you got in the way of pianos, Bud? Stool. Ooh. <laughs> but uh, we could move them to one side if you didn't mind standing up to play. Now, look, McGee. We're not buying any new piano. We haven't paid for the one we got yet. Okay, now, look, Bud. How about a book on piano playing for a beginner? Oh, certainly, sir. Here's one right here entitled... Cantatas for the Kiddies, or How to Make a Louse Out of Strauss. <laughs> okay, wrap it up. Oh, but McGee, that's for children. You don't want I to... I ain't, Trob. I got to start at the beginning, ain't I? I don't expect to be on a par with Fritz Chrysler overnight. Uh, Chrysler is a violinist, sir. 
Didn't he play the piano? Uh, no, sir. Oh, then I am on a par with Chrysler. <laughs> That's encouraging. You're also on a par with Gene Autry's horse. He can't play the piano either. Uh, here's your book, sir. Uh, Two dollars. Okay, bud. Here you are. Oh, thank you, thank you. And I sincerely hope, sir, that you get along nicely with your music. I, myself, am by way of being a composer, you know. Oh, <laughs> how interesting. What have you composed, sir? I wrote an impressionistic little thing for string ensemble. It was a descriptive piece about a man waiting outside the maternity ward. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Oh, that's a kind of a cute idea, but... Yeah. <laughs> What'd you call it? Hubby Lobby. <laughs> well, good luck with the lesson, sir. Ah, uh, you know, Molly, I got a feeling this marks a turning point in my life. You've had so many turning points, you'll soon be known as Farling Fibber McGee. Oh. Well, hello there, Johnny. Hello, Johnny. What you doing? Well, McGee just decided to take piano lessons, Mr. Oldtimer. Is that so? I come from a musical family myself, kid. Oh. Papa was a, tri a surgeon, and just to relax, he used to play tunes on his song. <laughs> I'll bet his patients love that. We never knew. Trees don't talk. Oh. <laughs> oh, he was a tree surgeon, huh? Yep. Spent four years as an intern in a lumber yard. <laughs> <laughs> I had a cousin that was a tree surgeon. Specialized in optical work on bird's eye maple. Oh, my <laughs> That's pretty good, Johnny. But that ain't the way I heard it. <laughs> the way I heard it. You play any other instrument, Johnny? <laughs> used to. When I was wooing Molly here, I used to play the mandolin on canoe rides, but she made me give it up. What for, daughter? Because I got tired of doing all the paddling, that's why. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that's pretty good, too, daughter. But that ain't the way I... Uh, by the way, you read music, Johnny? <laughs> I did once, and I can pick it up again pretty fast. Why, when I was a kid, I studied for a long, long time under the famous Professor Ware. Long under Ware McGee, I was known as. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good, Johnny, but... Long under Ware McGee, the mighty mucky muck of the metronome, making mugs, the mediocre musical mucks muddling through a mess of monotonous medleys, making millions marvel at the minor melodies made into magnificent masterpieces by the miraculous movements of my magic mitt, nipping many a maestro as I modulated from March Militaire into Minuet and G, and that's the story of Long Underwear McGee. <laughs> piano rest. I've had three phone calls from the neighbors complaining about the noise. I can't stop now, Molly. I'm just getting the hang of it. Get the hang of it, huh? Why, it'll be years before you can even play chopsticks without getting a nasty note from the Chinese ambassador. <laughs> oh, I don't know. 
I'm catching on pretty fast. The only thing that bothers me is these pedals underneath. I don't know which is the brake and which is the clutch. <laughs> Maybe it's... Oh, McGee. Huh? Mrs. Uppington is at the door. Oh, she would be. Well, give the old war horse some hay and slap her into a stall. <laughs> After all, you know, she's the one who gave us the tickets to the concert. Oh, yeah. Come in, Abigail, dear. Oh, how do you do, my dear? And how do you do, Miss... Well, I didn't know you were a pianist, Mr. McGee. Didn't you, honest, Tuppy? <laughs> Yuck. <laughs> and, I, and I dearly love piano music. Oh, tell me, do you know Schubert's Unfinished Symphony? No, I don't, Uppy. I started to add that to my repertoire once. And then I thought, shucks, I thought, why learn that till it's finished, then I can play the whole thing. <laughs> So I never took a... Oh, my, how amusing. <laughs> that killed me, too. <laughs> I studied piano myself, you know. Oh. Oh, yes. My instructor always said the nicest things about my contrapuntal bravura. Oh. Did you slap his sassy face, Abigail? <laughs> Mrs. McGee. Well, what do you have to say about your piano player? Oh, I was a very brilliant pupil. I won scholarship after scholarship. Why, the moment I would enter one conservatory, they'd give me a scholarship and send me somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was a very broadening experience. Yes, yeah, so I see. I always said they made those piano stools too narrow. <laughs> Say, incidentally, Abigail, we want to thank you for your tickets to the concert. Yeah. We enjoyed every minute of it. Yeah, well, personally, I thought the guy was pretty high hat up. But he, in one number, when he got going pretty hot, I tossed four bits up on the stage, and all I got was a dirty look. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I hope you get along nicely with your practicing, Mr. McGee. Oh, uh, may I try your piano? Oh, sure, go ahead, up. It ain't in very good shape. We, we've used it so little, some of the keys have even turned black. <laughs> Uh, let me see now. I... Ah, yes. Oh, heavenly days, McGee. <laughs> Why, she can give you the lost card with knots in it. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's pretty fair country piano playing, I think. <laughs> What was the name of that number? Oh, that is a little folk song I picked up in Brittany, Miss McGee. Oh. It is called Trappez moi mon père, oui, à la mesure. Meaning what? Beat me, daddy, eight to the bar. <laughs> And you were going to show her how to play the piano. <laughs> you wait, I'll show you. Well, wait till my teacher gets here. Your teacher? Yep, I looked up a piano teacher in the classified directory. She ought to be here any minute now. One, two, three, four, five, four, three, one. Hey, Molly, what's an octave? An octave, dearie, is eight notes. It is? Yes. Remember that dirty octave we got from the piano company last month? <laughs> Hey, Molly, I was just passing by when I heard you dusting the piano, so I thought I'd drop in and suggest that little Johnson's wife... Oh, would... no, no, I wasn't dusting the piano, Mr. Wilcox. That was me, Harlow. I was practicing my piano lesson. <laughs> you taking piano lessons? <laughs> well, laugh if you want to, but I've started this thing and I'm going through it. <laughs> Well, let me know if you get stuck on any technicalities. Why, Mr. Wilcox, are you a musician? Oh, in a way. I'm an expert in domestic harmony. For instance, I keep harping on the fact that housework is much less treble if you take sharp measures in your flat oh. to bar dust and dirt with Johnson's wax. Oh. <laughs> Johnson's wax gives you, as a matter of course, the key to a better scale of living. Oh. oh. So go over to your nearest dealer oh. and see the man at the counterpoint to Johnson's Wax as the major product of its kind. Oh. Do it today. Oh. Oh. Heavenly days. You know what you deserve for a sales talk like that? Sure, Molly, but it won't hurt because I have a pillow stuffed in my pants. <laughs> oh, you saw it coming, eh? Yeah, I call this my pun cushion. Oh. See you later, folks. <laughs> See the man at the counter point to Johnson's way. Of all the truth. 
As the barber says to the guy that was just getting out of the chair, what'll he think of? Next? <laughs> oh, well. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. <laughs> Ain't this a panic, Molly? <laughs> Here we've had the piano all this time, and I never knew to allow that now that I was a musician. <laughs> 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 Hard to play piano and talk at the same time. <laughs> I was a musician. Shall I say it? That's right. <laughs> That's nothing. My grandfather was 80 years old before he discovered he was a nationogenarian. <laughs> I thought he ate meat. What's the matter? My thumbs. They're too short. Maybe if I put thimbles on them, they'll be able to... Oh, dear. I hope that isn't another neighbor to complain about your practicing. Come in. Uh, excuse me, please. Is Mr. McGee living here, please? You betcha, sis. I'm him. Well, I'm the teacher. You're calling me out for some music lesson. Oh, oh yes. Come right in, dear. <laughs> Come right in. Here's your little pupil right here. Pupil, here's teacher. <laughs> Hi, sis. Let's get started right away. What do you say, huh? No, certainly. Uh, what kind of piano are you wishing to learn, please? Uh, classic, jittle bogging, conservative, or boogie-woogie? <laughs> All of them. I want to be a finished pianist as soon as possible. That's funny. That's exactly what I want you to be. No, <laughs> you ain't got the right attitude about this, Molly. Here I am about to bring art and culture into our drab lives, and what do you do? Oh, I just stand here like little Audrey and laugh and laugh and laugh. <laughs> Okay, okay, but I say I'm going to learn piano, and I'm going through with it. Now, look, uh, Mrs., uh, what's her name? Well, my married name is being Highwater. Oh, what's Highwater. your first name, dearie? Helen. <laughs> That's read it. I'm going to learn piano in spite of it. <laughs> now, come on, sis, give it the teach. <laughs> Uh, first, they're sitting on the piano stool. Relax. Dear, don't go to sleep, dearie. Just relax. Uh, ben is placing the fingers on the keys like this. Hmm, such interesting hands you got there. Uh, what do you mean, sis? Well, I'm also being our fortune teller, Mr. McGee. Oh. Yes, uh, from the lines on the hands, I am telling you our past, present, and future. <laughs> For instance, from this line here, I am seeing that you are naturally very domesticated. Oh, why, she's wonderful, McGee. Uh -huh. That's where you cut yourself with a can opener. <laughs> Go on, sis. What else do my hands say? Hi, it's looking like bad news. There is something about a financial difficulty in the near future. There is, huh? <laughs> Shucks, that won't be anything. Uh... <clears throat> Incidentally, how much you charge for a piano lesson? Uh, Twenty dollars for a half hour. Oh, oh heavenly days. Why, that's Oh, not... no, you don't, sis. That's too much. I won't pay it. Sorry you had your visit here for nothing, but the deal's all off. Shall I call you a taxi cab, dearie? Thank you, no. My taxi is waiting outside. I told him I'll be right out. What? You told the taxi? How did you know? I told my own fortune before I left home. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Harriet, I 
trouble learning the mandolin? I should say not. Not. When I took up the study of the mandolin, I sat at the feet of one of the great masters. Oh, and what did he do? He kicked me. <laughs> so I taught myself, just like I'm going to teach myself the piano. Now, look here, McGee. What's the idea of irritating the whole neighborhood with your infernal rum titty bum, rum titty bum? I ain't going rum titty bum, rum titty bum. All I'm doing is. Stop it! Stop it, for goodness sake! Oh, this eternal Doremi has me frantic. Oh, you mean this? Uh... Oh, Rick! Oh, for goodness sake, Mr. Gildersleeve, quiet. Well, I'm a music lover. <laughs> You a music lover. <laughs> a Spanish serenader. <laughs> That's a laugh, Gildersleeve. <laughs> Why, you wouldn't know the old oaken bucket if somebody stuck your head in it, and I think they ought to. Is that so? Yes, that so. You're a hard man, McGee. <laughs> and by George, this time you've gone too far. Well, he knows the way back. <laughs> You'll trifle with me once too often, McGee. If I had a tape measure, I'd beat you within an inch of your life. Oh, yeah? Don't get gay with me, you big blimp. <laughs> I'll let you have it. And between me and me, me and you, you could use a little. Between me and a little what? A little it. Now, listen, boys. Here, let's not quarrel. You're getting all mixed up here, the both of you. McGee's piano studies won't last long, Mr. Gildersleeve. It's just a passing fancy with him. It's never no such a thing. I started learning piano, and I'm going through with it. <laughs> <laughs> Look, little chum, uh, let's get together on this, huh? <laughs> okay, Gil, let's get together. You sit next to me, and yeah. we'll both go. <laughs> no, no, stop it! Stop it! Stop it! What I meant was, can't we make a deal? How about selling me the piano? I'll pay any price that isn't downright fantastic. Oh, we can't sell it, Mr. Gildersleeve. It isn't ours. Yes. Uh, whose is it? Whistle Vista Piano Companies. Still owe a few back payments on it. Sure. Uh, back payments, eh? Yeah. <laughs> very interesting. As a matter of fact, the president of the piano company is a very good friend of mine, McGee. Oh. <laughs> yes. Indeed. Well, if you excuse me, I have to go see a man about a dog. <laughs> well, so long, Gildy. Goodbye, Fido. <laughs> <laughs> Fido, what do you mean by that? 
search me, dearie. But look, now that you've begun to use this piano, hadn't you better finish paying for it? Oh, they ain't going to make trouble after all these years. <laughs> Maybe I better call them up, don't straighten it out. Give me the phone. Here you are. Thanks. Hello, operator. Give me a whistle this... Oh, is that you, Mert? No, no. <laughs> hey, Mert, give me a whistle this to 9999, will you? Thanks. Hello, is this 9999? Huh? Oh, what number is it? Oh, I'm sorry. Hey, Mert. Hey, Mert, what's the matter with you? I called 9999 and you give me 6666. Huh? Oh, I see. Well, never mind. Thanks, anyway. How'd you happen to give you 6666 instead of 9999? <laughs> she says they got her so busy she's standing on her head. <laughs> well, I better get on with my practice. <laughs> As Fibber McGee says when he heard somebody knocking at the door, who's that? <laughs> Search me. Come in. We're from the Whistful Vista Piano Company, Doc. Come for the piano. It's reposet, buddy. Oh, no. Wait a minute, Toby. You can't do this to me. A friend of mine is a good friend of the president of the piano company. He was going to speak to him about them back payments. He did. Uh-oh. Gildersleeve. Why, that dirty look. Now, now, look, fellas. I'm studying how to play this thing, see? You don't want me to grow up in ignorance of the finer things in life, do you? You don't want to stunt my character by denying me the cultural advantage. Grab that end of the box, Charlie. Okay, Okay. come on. Hey, it won't go through that door. How do you get it in here? Well, we've had the door weather stripped since we bought the piano, boys. You can't get it out without damaging the door. And if you make one mark on that door, I'll sue the piano company for breach of plenty. See? (laughs) He's got it, Charlie. Oh, no, he ain't, Percy. That's a big window over there. We can get it out that way. Oh, Open it up. Okay, okay. Oh, oh well, there goes your musical career, dearie, right out the window. Oh, yeah. Well, they can't do this to me. Drop that piano, you big palooka. Oh, oh, I didn't say it on my foot. Easy now, Charlie. Let's go through the window, okay? Come I on. got it, pussy. Yeah. Oh, no, you don't. If you take that piano out of here, you'll have to take me with it. Okay. Oh, it's a deal, buddy. Yeah. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. For your musical persistence. What you mean? You said you were going to go through with it, and you did. harder wear than your kitchen floor. It gets heavy traffic, wet and muddy feet track across it regularly, and it gets more than its share of things spilled on it. In fact, your kitchen floor might easily be called your problem floor if it weren't for Johnson's self-polishing blow coat. This easy-to-use floor polish has simply eliminated that problem altogether. First, because glow coat protects the linoleum against wear and bad weather, guards the linoleum surface against scratches and dirt penetration. Second, because Glow Coat makes a linoleum floor beautiful, makes it gleam and sparkle, keeps its colors like new. Third, because Glow Coat actually makes the linoleum last much longer. And fourth, because it saves you so much hard work. Johnson's Glow Coat needs no rubbing or buffing. Simply apply and let dry. And in 20 minutes, your floor gleams under its protective polish. Put Glow Coat on your next shopping list. to get the best of the McGee. I'll say it does, dearie. Yes, sir. 
You'll have to leave now. Why? The wistful Vista Piano Company warehouse always closes at six. Oh, okay, bud. Good night. Good night, all. and Johnson's self-polishing glow coat, inviting you to be with us again next Tuesday night. Good night. If you own an automobile, you'll be glad to know about Car New, Johnson's sensational new auto polish. Whether your car is old or new, you can improve its appearance, increase its trade-in value, add to your pleasure of driving simply by giving it a Car New beauty treatment. All of this at low cost, and with very little work, because Carnew both cleans and wax polishes at the same time, in half the time it used to take. Write this down on your memo pad tonight. I want to wax polish my car with Johnson Carnew, spelled C-A-R-N-U. This is the National Broadcasting Company. Mm-hmm.